welcome again. Thanks for being here. Let's take a comfortable seat, letting the hands rest in the lap with the legs crossed. And take a moment just to adjust so you feel like you're sitting evenly through the right and left hips and that you're centered over the pelvis, you're not leaning forward or backward at that point. And let your spine get tall and feel your shoulders relax down your back. And gently close your eyes when you're ready. We'll begin with a few minutes of centering and breath awareness before we start to move. As you draw your focus inward and come into your body, just take a moment to notice how you're feeling right now at this point in the day. Acknowledging what you've experienced today. Noticing where your thoughts are and what your mood is like right now. Take a moment to scan through your body, just checking in with yourself from head to toe. Acknowledging any sensations that are present for you right now, any places of tension or fatigue. Acknowledging areas that you just need to be mindful of or pay attention to in certain poses. Bring your awareness to the gentle movement of your breath. Notice the sound and the sensation of the air as it comes into the body. begin to purposefully slow down and deepen your breath. See if you can find a one-to-one -one ratio of inhaling to exhaling. Perhaps counting in your mind for a few rounds. Personally, I always find that it's easier to lengthen the exhalation phase of the breath than it is the inhalation. So when you're working with this one-to-one -one ratio, you want to make sure that it's whatever you can inhale comfortably. You'll be able to sustain that if it doesn't extend you too far. So maybe it's a count of three or four. And then you may need to accelerate the exhalation in order to match that inhalation.
In the next few rounds of breath, see how it feels to add a retention phase at the bottom of your exhalation. See if you can stay there for a few moments before you invite the new breath in, holding in that place of contraction. And at first, maybe it's just a second or two, but if you're really comfortable with the feeling of this pause, you can let that also be the same ratio as the two phases of your breath. So you can inhale for four, exhale for four, and pause for four, and see how that feels in your body. Take just one more cycle of breath with this retention phase. And then resume the regular breath cycle, eliminating the retention but still maintaining that slower speed and greater depth. So you can float your eyes open when you're ready. Take a moment to adjust the light in your space. Good, and then let's switch the ankle that's in front. And we're gonna take some seated spinal waves to start our movement practice. We're gonna get the arms involved here. On the inhalation, bring your hands back to your hips and squeeze the shoulder blades together as you lift the chest and the chin, arching your back. And then exhale, slide your hands forward toward your knees as you tilt the pelvis backward and round your spine, dropping the chin. Again, inhale, squeeze the shoulders back. Exhale, round, slide the hands forward and pull the shoulders apart. So continue back and forth, moving at the speed of your own breath here. And the next time you exhale through the rounded spine, that can be your last one. And then go ahead and return to a neutral upright position. Good, from here, let's open the legs widely out to the side. And we'll take a seated wide-legged forward bend. Point the toes up toward the ceiling as you reach forward through your heels and take the fingertips to the floor just in front of your pelvis. Sit up nice and tall and take a deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, lean your upper body forward, walking the hands forward as you gradually fold right down the center. Next breath in, go ahead and rise back up. Good, let's fold the right knee and bring that heel to rest in front of the pelvis. And we'll take a side bend to the left. You can take your left hand to the ground inside the leg. Raise your right arm up over your shoulder and inhale. And then exhale, bend to the left, leaning over the straight leg. Let your right arm come over your face, reaching the fingertips beyond the toes if possible.
And on your next breath in, rise back up. Exhale and release the arm and switch legs. Open the right leg back out to the side. Fold your left knee and place the heel right in front of your pelvis. Your right hand's going to come down to the mat inside the leg and inhale the left arm up over the shoulder. Exhale, bend to the right, leaning the upper body over the straight leg as the left arm comes over your face. Try to reach your fingertips beyond where the toes are. Good. On your next breath in, rise back up and exhale, release the arm. Good. Let's unfold the leg. You can come down off of whatever you're sitting on if you took some support underneath you. <clears throat> and let's come into table pose on the hands and knees. Good. We're going to come into cross lateral balance from here. Let's straighten the right leg behind and the left arm forward, finding one long line from the fingertips to the heel. Engage your lower abdominals and your lower back. And then take three more breaths. With your last breath out, put the hand down. Bend your right knee and lift the heel a little higher up toward the ceiling, engaging your glute and your hamstring. And then the next time you exhale, round the back and bring the knee in toward your nose. Good. Hover here, engaging your abdominals. Look between your hands and then step your right foot up in between them. Come up on your fingertips or blocks. Low lunge. Slide your left knee a little farther back and let your pelvis draw down toward the floor. Good. Take a few moments to settle in here. Feel your sternum lift forward and up. Good. And start to squeeze your inner thighs toward the midline of your mat, so hip adduction. And then inhale, reach the arms forward and up, coming to low crescent lunge. Elevating your ribcage and sternum as you slide the arms back in space. Creating that crescent shape from the fingertips to your back toes. Good. Look down at the ground. We're going to exhale and place both arms to the inside of the right leg. Move the right foot over a little bit and turn the toes out about 45 degrees. And let the knee and thigh fall away from the shoulder. Taking this wide angle variation. Good. You can stay up on the fingertips or make a fist, or you can bring your elbows down to blocks or the floor if that feels good. And let's take some gentle rocking side to side in the pelvis. Let's tuck the back toes under now and lift the back knee, straightening the leg. 
We still have both arms inside of the right thigh. Let's keep the left hand down and twist, raising the right arm up, rotating from the waist. Good. One more deep breath in. Exhale and release. From here, wiggle the right foot over a little bit more so it comes just off the mat. And you can plant your palms shoulder width apart and then step back and find plank pose. You've got to take a deep breath in here in plank. And then exhale, carefully lower your body to the floor. Point your toes. Inhale and arch up to cobra. Exhale, let it go. Twice more. Inhale, open the front of the body. Exhale, release. Once more. Inhale to cobra. Exhale, let it go. Go ahead and tuck your toes and press back up to table. Go ahead and adjust so that your hands are shoulder width apart and the knees are hip width apart. And then extend your left leg behind you and your right arm in front of you. Come into this cross lateral balance. Reaching your limbs as far apart as you can. Feel strength through your core. Good. Let's exhale. Just place the hand down. Bend your left knee behind you like you're trying to kick the ceiling. And try and lift the heel up a little bit higher. Firing up your glutes and your hamstrings. And then the next time you exhale, bring the knee to your nose and round your back, hollowing out your front side. Good. Hover here. Look between your hands. <clears throat> and then step that foot in between them for your low lunge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good. Come up on your fingertips, your blocks. Walk your right knee a little farther to the back of your mat so your hips get a little lower and point those toes. Good. Lift your chest. Settle into your breath here. You can feel your inner thighs squeeze toward the midline of your mat, adapting the hips. Inhale and reach the arms forward and up for a low crescent lunge. Feel your arms move back in space, elevating your chest. Good. Look down, right? Exhale both hands to the inside of the left foot. Move the left foot over toward the edge of your mat a little bit and turn it out at a 45 degree angle and let the knee and thigh fall out to the side as well. Good. You can stay here or place the elbows on blocks of the floor and let's rock a little bit back and forth in the hips. Inhale, flat back. 
Exhale, fold forward. Once more, inhale, lift and lengthen. And then exhale, bend into the front knee again, returning to the lunge. Good, tuck your back toes under and lift and straighten that leg. And I'm just realizing last time I did the twist here in this high lunge, but we already did it in the low lunge. So let's plant the palms. You can wiggle the left foot over to the side. Plant your palms and step back to plank. Good, take a deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower to the floor. Point the toes. Inhale, coming to cobra just once this time. Exhale, let it go. Tuck your toes and inhale, push back up to the hands and knees. And then exhale, send the hips to your heels as you push forward through your hands, engaging the arms. And then lift your hips up when you're ready, coming into downward facing dog. Good, feet are hip width apart and parallel. Spread the fingers widely. And just find the length here through your arms and your spine. And as much length in the legs as the hamstrings will allow. Focus on lifting the tailbone upward, finding that forward tilt in your pelvis. One more breath in, look forward. As you breathe out, step up to your hands. Take the hands to your shins. Inhale, flat back position. Exhale, forward fold. Twice more. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Once more. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Good. Let's stay here. You can hold on to the elbows, crossing at the forearms, and just let your shoulders melt down toward your ears. Maybe move your head around a little to loosen up the neck. And we'll take three more breaths. With your last breath out, let go of the elbows. And then sweep the arms out to the side as you inhale and rise up, reaching over your head at the top. And exhale, release the arms to your sides. Good. Finding mountain pose here. We'll take a few rounds of slow sun salutations. On your next breath in, reach the arms up and overhead. And exhale, dive forward over your legs. Inhale, flat back position. Exhale, bend your knees and step back to plank pose. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower down. Point your toes and inhale, come into cobra. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, push up to the knees. Exhale, hips to heels and then lift up when you're ready, coming into downward facing dog. <clears throat> One more breath in, looking forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Open the arms. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release. Second round. Inhale, begin. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend your knees. Step back to plank pose. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, push up to the knees. Exhale, hips to heels. And then lift up to downward facing dog. Stay here and breathe.
On your next breath in, look forward. As you breathe out, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release. Final round. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank pose. One breath in. Exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, push up. Exhale, hips to heels and then lift up, downward facing dog. And let's add a hip opener here this time. Inhale and raise your right leg up into the air and then open that hip to the side and bend the knee, letting the heel fall toward your hip. Try and stay level through your shoulders as you press evenly through both hands. And see if you can let your left heel draw a little closer to the floor here, getting a deep stretch through the calves. Good, exhale, return the right foot to the mat. And inhale, raise the left leg up, open that hip to the side, and bend that knee. And maybe drop your right heel a little bit more if possible. Good, exhale, return the left foot to the mat. Look forward and inhale. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reaching over your head. Exhale, release. Good, close your eyes and stand to your mountain pose for a few breaths. Notice the energy in your body now at this point. Let your shoulders relax down away from your ears. Good. All right, point your eyes open when you're ready. We're going to come into triangle pose. I'm going to grab some blocks to use as a, a support instead of uh, my shin tonight. So if you've got blocks, you can use those too. But if not, your shin works great. I'm going to stack my blocks together and put them at the front of the mat on the left side. And I'm going to step my left foot just slightly ahead of the blocks. So the blocks are outside my calf. Good. And then take a big step back with the right foot and increase the spacing so it's long enough for your triangle. We want either heel arch or heel heel alignment, whatever feels best in your hips. We want the pelvis really open to the long edge of the mat. Strengthen and straighten both legs and open the arms out to the sides. And then you're going to feel your pelvis tilt toward your right heel as you lean your upper body toward your left foot. So reaching forward as far as you can. And then pivot the arms, finding the blocks or the shin with your left hand as you raise the right hand to the ceiling. Good. Take a few breaths here to settle into the shape. One more breath in. As you exhale, contract your abdominals and rise back up. And then from here, bend deeply into your left knee and come into warrior two. If you need to adjust your stance, my feet are a little wide for this warrior two, so I'm going to take it in just a bit. You can do that. But we want to keep the direction of the thigh bone straight forward. Good. Feel your spine get tall over the pelvis. Good. And then with the breath, let's inhale, straighten the front leg again and join your palms together over your head. And then exhale, return to warrior two. Good. 
a few more times. Inhale, gather that energy above you as you straighten the front leg. Exhale, return to warrior two. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Good. From here, you can relax the arms, straighten the front leg, and rotate the left toes in. So now both feet are parallel and your whole body is facing the long edge of your mat. Let's bring the hands to the waist. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and back as you open your chest. Take a deep breath in and lift your sternum. Exhale, send your tailbone back and your upper body forward as you take our wide-legged forward bend, dropping the head toward the floor. Good. Take a few deep breaths here. From here, release your hands to the floor. Inhale, flat back position, lengthen your spine. Look over at your left foot, rotate it back to the front of your mat to the short edge. Walk your hands up there and end up in a lunge position. <clears throat> Good, let's take the back knee down to the floor again. And I'm gonna have you just move those blocks out of the way if you are using them for your, uh, for your triangle pose. Good. So back knee to the floor in this low lunge. We're going to keep the leg in the center this time. We did that wide angle version earlier. So let's come into the twist again. Right hand's going to stay down. Rotate from your waist and raise the left arm up. And then start to let your left arm fall back in space. So the thumb is pointing up to the ceiling and the fingers are reaching toward the end of your mat. And then let's try and take a quad stretch here. Bend your back knee and see if you can reach to take the top of the foot. If that's not there for you tonight, you can just keep reaching the left arm back. It's a great chest opening variation in this twist. If you've got the foot, we'll just hold here in the quad stretch variation for a few extra breaths. Take that sequence for the other side. I'm just going to switch to the other side of my mat, but you can stay where you are. I'm just going to make sure you're still in front of you. So the blocks are going on the right side of the mat if you're using them for triangle support. Right foot forward and a big step back with the left foot, and then increase the distance so you have a long enough stance for your triangle. Good. Strengthen and straighten both of your legs and open your arms out to the side at shoulder height, energizing the arms. Good, you're going to lean your hips back and your upper body forward, reaching your hand far out over the right foot, and then pivot the arm so the right hand finds your block stack or your shin, and the left hand reaches up toward the ceiling with that palm open, shoulder blades squeezing together. One 
one more deep breath in. As you breathe out, contract your abdominals and rise back up. Good. From here, bend your right knee deeply and come into warrior two. Ideally, the stance should be just right, but if you need to adjust your feet, go ahead, finding that depth in the front leg. The back leg retains its straightness and length from triangle. Good, and then some movement with the breath. Inhale, slowly straighten the front leg again as you reach the arms over your head and join your palms together above you. And then exhale, open back up, returning to warrior two. Twice more, inhale, reach up and over. Exhale, warrior two. Once again, inhale. And exhale, warrior two. Good, you can relax the arms for a moment. Let's straighten the front leg again, and now rotate the foot so that our feet are parallel, preparing for a wide-legged forward bend. I'll give you two options for the arms. You can take the hands to the waist like we did the first time and squeeze the shoulder blades back to open the chest that way. Or you can interlace the fingers behind you if you're comfortable with that, straightening the arms and opening the collarbones. A little more intense there. Either way, take a nice deep breath in and lift your sternum. And then as you breathe out, send your tailbone back and your upper body forward as you gradually fold down the center of the legs, letting the head drop. If you've taken the straight arm position, try and keep squeezing the shoulder blades together as you just gradually let the fists lift up and away from your spine. Stay in the forward bend, but exhale and slowly release the arm position, separating the hands and taking them to the floor. Inhale, lift your chest, come into the flat back position here. And then look over at your right foot. You're going to rotate those toes forward, walk your hands up to the front of the mat, and end up in a lunge here with the right knee bent deeply. Good. Let's place the back knee down on the mat so you're in a low lunge. You can move those blocks out of the way. We're done with that for now. Good. So we're going to come into that twist again. The left hand will stay down. You're going to rotate from your waist and raise the right arm up. And then let the right arm start falling back in space, like you're trying to reach the fingertips toward the back edge of your mat. Good. Opening the chest. And then optional quad variation. You're going to bend the back knee and see if you can just reach the top of the foot or the toes, drawing that heel closer to the hip to stretch your quadriceps. If that's not working out for you, Continue to reach the hand back in space. Good. If you have the left foot in your hand, gently let it go. And then let's all sweep the right arm up and then take the hand back to the floor outside of the foot. Good. From here, lift your back knee high again. Plant your palms and step back and up into downward facing dog. Good. Let's pedal the legs back and forth a few times, rocking side to side in the hips. Good. And then let's bring the knees to the ground and come into child's pose. Closing out the standing poses for tonight. Take a few moments here, just letting your body melt down toward the floor, softening through the shoulders. From here, go ahead and lift yourself up. And I'm going to have you take one of your blocks. We're going to use it to support um, our hero pose, which is seated posture. 
So you're going to take your, um, let's come to table to start. Um, take your knees together in table and separate your feet wide enough to grab that block and place it in between the feet on the low position and the wide way. Okay, and then go ahead and lower your hips down to sit on the block. So support a hero pose. The soles of the feet should be facing upward toward the ceiling. So we're going to just do a little stretch here for the front of the ankles, and then we're going to work on reclined hero to stretch the quads and the psoas a little bit more. So for the ankles, we're going to start with the left foot. You're going to take your left hand and reach it underneath the left foot so that you've got a hold on the top of the foot, and then curl the toes in toward your heel. So I'm now lifting the forefoot off of the floor. You should be getting a deep stretch in the top of the foot in front of the ankle. Your right hand can just rest in the lap. If this causes any cramping in the arch of your foot, then of course just let it go and relax for a moment. But it's as if you're trying to make a fist, but with your foot, and you're just using your hand to assist with that. Good. Take a few more breaths, holding this position. And then release, letting the top of the foot and the toes come back to the floor. And now use the heel of your hand and press the heel of your hand into the center of the arch of the foot. And just lean your upper body weight into the hand, just kind of mashing the muscles around there. And so you can press and let go and press and let go. And my arm is straight and my elbow is locked. So just using your upper body weight as leverage to get some pressure in the arch of the foot. A couple more here for the left. Good, all right, let's switch. So now you're gonna let your right hand come down and slide it underneath the right foot so that you can grab all five toes and try to curl them in so that you lift the forefoot off of the floor but the front of the ankle is still in contact with the mat. Again, like you're trying to make that fist here with your foot, stretching all that musculature in the front of the ankle. It's not a place we think about very often or intentionally stretch. It gets a little bit of stretch when we're in you know, poses like the lunge when I have you point your toes instead of tucking them, but this can be kind of a chronically tight area for many of us. Good, all right, let's let go and let the top of the foot rest on the mat again. And now using the heel of your hand, your right arm is gonna be straight, kind of locking the elbow. Press the heel of the hand, cut it into the ball and the arch of the foot, and apply pressure and then back off of it. Just kind of finding different spots. Activating some pressure points here, just using your upper body weight. All right, so now let's let both hands come into the lap, facing the upper body forward, sitting nice and tall. So supported hero pose. We're gonna to start to take this into a semi-reclined position. So start to lean your upper body weight back and take your hands behind you so you're on the fingertips. Squeeze the shoulder blades together so your chest remains open and just start to walk your hands back any amount. And what you'll notice as you start to go back in space is that your low back really arches a lot. And so we don't really want excessive arching in the lower back. So I'm gonna have you lift your butt up off the block and tuck your tailbone toward your knees. And that should activate quad and psoas stretch and then place the butt back down. So the farther back in space you go with your hands, you're gonna wanna maybe redo that tucking. Kind of lift the hips up, tuck the tailbone and set it back down. So because we have the hips on the block, it's not possible to go fully reclined. And unless you're a Gumby, you're probably not doing that anyway. But you might find that you can bring your elbows to the floor behind you. That is really intense on the low back. So being on the palms still is plenty if this is not for you. All 
So you want to be really mindful of your knees, right? We should never stay in a pose if there's a feeling of pain in the knee joint. You want to be stretching muscles, but not destabilizing any ligaments or tendons. And if you're ready to come out, start walking the hands closer to your feet, lifting your upper body up little by little. Good, and then lean yourself forward, put your hands down and come to the table. Good, let's just take a few rounds of spinal waves here to the table. Inhale, lift the tail, chest and chin. Exhale, tuck and round. A few more at your own pace. back and through and grab that block, getting it out of the way. Good, and let's have a seat directly on the mat. And let's take seated bound angle pose here, bring the soles of the feet together and open the knees widely out to the side. Hold on to the tops of the feet or the ankles and sit as tall as you can as you widen the knees. Take one more deep breath in here. And then exhale, drop the chin as you lean your upper body forward, folding toward the feet. If your elbows make contact with your inner thighs, you can gently press there. And take about five more breaths. to come out, inhale and rise up, and exhale, close the knees. Now let's come down to the back, and then I'd like to finish up with a reclined twist. Let's take a moment to settle your spine against the floor, and then you can slide your right leg down and bring your left knee in toward your upper body, and hug it close for a few breaths. Allowing your low back to lengthen. And then before you twist, put some space between your thigh and your ribcage, and then cross it over and down. Floating your right arm out to the side to counter the leg. And you can scoot your bottom hip over to the right side a little bit to help line up your SI joints here. As you hold for a few more breaths. to release, exhale and unwind. Bend both knees and adjust your hips to center. Take a moment to let your spine settle. And then slide your right leg down and hug your left knee close to your upper body for a few breaths. Put some space between your thigh and your ribcage before you cross the knee over and down for your reclined twist. Float the left arm out to the side and adjust your bottom hip over to the left a little bit as you settle in here.
in. And exhale, gently unwind. Good. Bend both knees and adjust your hips so they're centered below you. And we're going to come to Shavasana now. So if there's any extra layers of clothing you want to put on or any props you'd like to use to support your body tonight, I'm going to throw a bolster behind my knees. Go ahead and get whatever makes you comfortable. Once you feel settled, gently close your eyes as you allow your whole body to release into the floor, letting go of any lingering active energy. And take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Allowing your natural breath cycle to return, letting go of the Focus and concentration on your breath. And let your mind go to a quiet place.
the surface and lengthen your breath. And in your own time, begin to move a little bit through the fingers and the toes. Slowly bring some energy back into your body. And eventually bend your knees and roll over to one side, curling up into a fetal pose. And just pausing there for a brief moment to notice how you feel. And with as little effort as possible, gently press yourself back upright and take a comfortable seat, keeping your eyes still closed. Take a moment to come back to your breath. Feel your spine get tall. Then you can bring the palms together in front of your heart and we'll end by chanting OM one time. Take a deep breath in. OM. Exhale and gently bow your head, acknowledging yourself for making the time and the space to practice this evening and expressing gratitude to your body. So thank you for being here. Have a wonderful night's sleep, and I look forward to seeing you next time.